uh, forgiveness. We'll be talking more extensively about forgiveness. Very important in our work with God. Very important in our work with God. The Bible makes us understand that forgiveness plays an important role in our great salvation. Without forgiveness, we cannot see the kingdom of God. And therefore, forgiveness is something that is a, re a great requirement for us as children of God. What is forgiveness? If we're talking about forgiveness, forgiveness is letting go of bitterness, letting go resentment, anger, thought of revenge against someone, your brother or your sister, who has erred against you. Forgiveness is letting go resentment, anger, thought of revenge against someone who has offended you to a, de a great degree, your brother or your sister. Jesus Christ, so many a times, Jesus Christ forgave his, his, his dispensation. Many a time believers say that, oh, I cannot forgive the degree at which the person has done this to me, the degree at which the person has offended me, I cannot forgive. My brothers and sisters, as you listen to me attentively, just don't, don't turn the dial. Continue to listen. And I believe that God will give you the grace and give you the insight to be able to forgive without a deep and a, a genuine forgiveness. My brother, your salvation will be questionable. I want us to understand that forgiveness plays an important role in our great salvation. If he, the master, did practice forgiveness, it is our covenant responsibility also to forgive. Forgiveness plays an important role. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 23, reading verses 34, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lot to divide his garment. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. When they offended him, when they beat him up, when they hung him on the cross, when they do, did so many things against our Savior and our Lord, the Bible says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. He prayed for forgiveness in the midst of an awful experience in his life. He prayed for forgiveness in the midst of the deep things that mankind has done to him. Jesus Christ did not curse them. Jesus Christ did not pray stones on them. But the Bible says he said, Father, forgive them. His characteristics, his character, element in Christ depicts forgiveness. He is Christ of forgiveness. Therefore, even at the terrible hour of his life, he prayed that kind of prayer. It is, isn't it amazing that when he was going through this terrible ordeal, he could have prayed a different prayer. Many, many of us rain stones, rain missiles on our enemies today. People even that we leave it at home, we rain so many things on them. Why? Because we don't want to forgive them. We want to see them dead and gone. But Jesus Christ did not rain these things on men, but he prayed the Father forgive them. There is a need for us to forgive. David said in the book of Psalm 66, reading verses 18, David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not have heard me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not have heard me. That is very important for us to have a good relationship with our God. My friend, there is a need for us to forgive. David said, I freed my mind. I freed my heart because if I have a people in my heart, my prayer will go unanswered. My prayer will go unanswered. Many believers today, we pray and our prayer go unanswered. Many are going to prophets and other places and many are receiving prophecies on bitterness, on anger, on rage, on unforgiving spirit. 
My brother, my sister, hear me good today that there is a need for us to do our homework, our assignment. There is a need for us to clean up in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our spirit, in our family. Let us clean up that when we go to God, God will pardon and God will have mercy and his ears will be attentive to our cry. I encourage you this very day to practice the God, the crisis kind of forgiveness. And that is the place that you can stand to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, hallelujah. That is the place to stand to see the glory of God in your life. I in regard iniquity in my heart. David said, the Lord will not have forgiven me or heard me. In other words, iniquity will prevent your prayer to be heard. When you harbor people, when you walk in bitterness, when you walk in rage, it is difficult for God even to see you and to recognize your prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the truth. That is the fact. I can give you a prophetic declaration, but it will not work via on bitterness, on, 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 on rage, on anger, on resentment against your brother or your sister. When you free yourself from all bitterness, from all anger, from all rage, you don't need any prophetic declaration, but the word of God will become true in your life naturally because it is God's hard desire that you be free from everything that you go through. Let, let, let bitterness leave you. Let anger go. Let resentment go and free your soul, your spirit in your work with God so that you can see the goodness of the Lord even in the land of the living. What causes unforgiveness in your life? Many unforgiveness in the church, in our family, in every place that you can talk about, many unforgiveness goes on in our life. What is the cause of unforgiveness? Unforgiveness. I will never forgive him. I will never let this go. I will never. Many a times we say things like that. Some of us have programmed our mind, our souls, and our spirit, then we will never forgive what people have done to us. What causes unforgiveness? When one offends you to a level that is difficult to forget, and he does not apologize. When somebody, uh, when somebody does something to you, to a level, to a degree, and the person does not apologize to you. It offends you, it hurts you. And therefore you say in your heart, that if he be water, I will never drink again. If he be dirt, I will never touch again. You say something in your heart, that I will not forgive him, have nothing to do with him again. Stand in that point, that I will not, and I cannot forgive him. Uh, why unforgiveness? When you are challenged or criticized about your integrity, you become bitter in your heart. When one despises you and does not give you respect that you are due, you become bitter and you become angry. Unforgiveness sparks in our heart. When people begin to challenge your integrity, and when people begin to do things to you and they don't render an apology, then unforgiveness develop in your heart. You come to a point that this thing that this brother has done to me, I will never forget and I will never forgive him. Brothers and sisters, you as a child of God, many children of God in the house of God today, Tied up men in our heart. Tied up men in our soul. Put people in the prisons of our heart. That no matter what it is, we will not let them go. My Jesus Christ, release Lazarus 
and say, untie him and let him go. This afternoon morning, I have come to let you understand that it is time to let men go. It is time to release people. People that you have changed, you have tied up in your heart. Jesus came to do good to men, not to help our people. I have come to you today that it is time to free men. Free men in your heart. If you free men, the Lord will also free you. My friend, it is time to free people. Forgiveness brings you, brings you to everlasting relationship with Christ. Now your prayers could be heard. When you forgive, it brings you to relationship with Christ. That is the place that your prayer, your cry could be heard. Many prayers are not heard. Many prayers go unanswered. Why? Because of, of unforgiveness. When you read the Bible in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verses 25, the Bible says, When ye stand, pray, forgive if ye have ought against any. Then your Father, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. When you stand praying, forgive. When you stand play, praying, clean your heart. When you stand praying, forgive people. If they have any ought against you, if you have any ought against anybody, Jesus Christ's requirement is that we must open our heart and forgive people their trespasses, and he will also forgive us. In other words, our prayer will go unanswered. Our prayer will not avail. Our prayer will go unanswered. Why? Because we have made a decision not to forgive. Let forgiveness, my friend, be part of your life. That is a very characteristic in the nature of Christ. He is a God who forgives. He forgave all people. He forgave all men. If he is a God who forgives, who are you to say, I will not forgive people? If you stand praying, if you stand praying, it's wonderful to see pastors who will say that I can't forgive. It's wonderful to see elders and deacons and horses and people playing important role in the house of God today, declaring that, oh, this man has done that. I'm never calling. I'm never doing, having nothing with him. Brothers and sisters, I told you some time ago that the Bible says on this earth, one day we will appear from this earth. We will go away from this earth. We are not from this world. This world and it passing will pass away. But if we don't do what is the will of God, if we don't walk in the true forgiveness, where will our soul be? Forgiveness. Point number two. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness brings us, brings separation, breakdown of marriage. And homes, in, in relatives, and good long time friendship, unforgiveness in our home, separation. Lots of marriages are destroyed because I will not forgive my husband, I will not forgive my wife, I will not. What he has done, I will not. My, my brother, my sister, understand the fact that Jesus Christ, irrespective of what. Men do did to him. He, he he created an environment to forgive all men their trespasses, and he made a declaration that come unto me, all those who are weary and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus extended invitation to every man. Jesus extended invitation to his accusers. He extended invitation to people who beat him mercilessly, who did wrong things against him. He extended invitation to them. Unforgiveness in our marriage today, breakdown of marriages, home, relatives, we and our families, no good relationship, no good terms, unforgiveness, causing a great deal in our families today, 
It's causing a harm in our families today. Causing a harm in our friendship today. Home forgiveness. That is why our friendship is not standing well because of home forgiveness. May the Lord open your heart today to be able to forgive. Unforgiveness brings about calamities, wars, and tragedies, nations, towns, cities, so many places. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will cause a great deal of harm to us as a people. I want us to read a scripture in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, reading verse 43 to 48. Let us hear the word of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 43 to 48. Yes, sir. You have heard that it was said. It was said. Love your neighbor mm -hmm. and hate your enemy. Hate your enemy. But I tell you. I tell you. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you, Jesus said. That you may be children of your father in heaven. You may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son mm. to rise on the evil and the good. And evil and the good. And sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Mm. Mm. Verse 46. Yes, sir. If you love those who love you. If you love those who love you. What reward will you get? What profit comes out of it? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? The worldly people do that. And if you greet only your own people. If you greet only your own people. What are you doing more than others? What are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Pagans do that. Be perfect. Be perfect. Therefore. Therefore. As your heavenly father. Is as perfect. your heavenly father is perfect. Oh, praise the Lord. Be perfect. As your heavenly father. Don't do things. Ordinary things. Do things that are a little bit technical. Your heavenly father is perfect. Be in good times with other people. Not because they have done anything to you. Jesus said, if you do, even the tax collectors, they do that. The pagans do that. It is time for the body of Christ. It is time for the people of God. It is time for us as children of God to come out and shake off every bitterness. Every rage. Every anger, any, any spirit of deceit in our heart, my brother, my sister, it will lead us only to hell, will lead us only to destruction, will lead us only to failure. Do something a little bit different. Do something a little bit different. Whatever you sow, listen, whatever you sow or give, it shall be given back to you. Whatever you sow in this life, whatever you give, it shall be given back to you. Let us quickly read something. In the book of Luke chapter, Luke chapter 6, reading verses 36 to 37, 38. Luke chapter 6. Let us hear the word of God. Luke chapter 6. Yes, sir. Verse number 36 mm -hmm. to 38. Be merciful. Be merciful. Just as your father is merciful. Just as Christ is merciful. Do not judge. Mm -hmm. And you will not be judged. Do not condemn. And you will not be condemned. Forgive. Mm. And you will be forgiven. Forgive. And you will for be forgiven. Give. Give. And it will be given to you. It will be given to you. A good measure. Mm -hmm. Pressed down. Mm. Shaking together and running over. Yes. Will be poured into your lap. Mm. For with the measure you use. The measure you use. It will be measured to you. It will be measured to you. Whatever you give, it will be given back to you in return. My brother, my sister, what are you giving? Forgive and you will also be forgiven. In other words, if I say I can't forgive, God will also hold me in, 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 in check. If you say you can't forgive your brother, God will hold you in check. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Forgive. It is painful. Forgive. It is difficult. Forgive. If you forgive men their trespasses, then your heavenly father will also forgive you. 
It is beautiful, my friend. Wake up and walk in true forgiveness. If God did not hold anything against you, if you can receive anything in the kingdom of God, I'll be preaching about with divine protection next month, from next week going. But I want you to prepare your heart. If you can receive covering and security in God, there is a need for you to forgive. Let men go out of your heart. Prepare your heart. Don't let any bitterness, any rage, any anger flow in your heart. It will not do you any good. It will rather destroy you. Matthew chapter 6. Reading verses 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. When you forgive people, you will be forgiven. The Lord said, if you don't forgive people, their trespasses, then your heavenly father will also not forgive you. Ephesians chapter 4, reading verse 32. And the Bible says, And be ye kind, be ye kind, one to another, tender hearted, forgive one another, even as, Christ, as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Be kind one to another. Be tender hearted one to another. And forgiving one to another. As through Christ, God has forgiven you all your trespasses. You have done a lot. You have seen a lot. You have you have you have you have gone your way for a long time. If Christ, if the Lord had killed you whilst you were out there smoking and drinking and doing other things. You will not have inherited the kingdom of God. You will not have become part of this great salvation. He forgave you. Learn to forgive other people. It doesn't matter the degree at which they have sinned. It doesn't matter the degree they have offended you. Friend, create a room in your heart to forgive. Forgiveness is of the Lord. Forgiveness is is of the Lord. When you forgive men their trespasses, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is nothing prophetic. This is nothing that uh, it is a principle. It's a principle. Walk in the principle of the Lord. Principle will not make you feel good. Principle will not make you feel happy. But you got to do it anyway. When you do it, it is the pathway to your abundance and to your protection and to your provision. Do it for the Lord's sakes. If you forgive me, unforgiveness, my friend, renders our offerings, our tithe, in everything that we do unproductive in the sight of God. We don't forgive. And we tie people in our heart. Somebody will say, oh, I've given, I've done everything that I want to, I need to do. But still, things are not working the way they should work. I've, I've got in my heart. I'm giving my tithe. I'm giving my offering. I'm doing everything that God requires for me. But still, oh, I'm arranging the chairs. Oh, I'm playing the drums. Oh, I'm doing that. My, my brother, my sister, maybe, maybe it's time to check in your heart if there is nothing in your heart. Matthew chapter 5, reading verses 23 to 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy, thy gift to the altar, and thou rememberest that thy brother have ought against thee, leave there thy gift, before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled with thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. If thou come to the altar and thou remember that thou hast ought within or with your brother, go back, leave your gift and go back. In other words, when we hold people at heart, it does not interest God. It does not make our, our gift acceptable in the sight of God. 
That is why we give all that we can. That is why we sing our best. That is why we dance our best. That is why we play our best. But yet God does not seem to recognize what we put in into his way. Why? Because unforgiveness is playing, hiding somewhere in the corner of your heart. It is time to release men. Let them go and be free. You can't receive the blessings of God in your life. If unforgiveness is playing part in your heart, when you bring your offering and you find out that somebody is there, then you have tied in your heart. The Bible said, go and make peace with that person. Go and make peace this morning. I don't know about you, but go and make peace. You might have had an issue with somebody. Go and make peace. Making peace will bring God's hand in your life. Making peace will reconnect you back to your former glory. Making peace will bring the hand of God back in your situation. Make peace with people. The Bible says, we should be at peace with all men. In holiness without which, no one will see the Lord. Be at peace. Make peace. The Lord is interested of peace. That is why he is called the Prince of Peace. That is why he is called the Giver of Peace. He is interested in you making peace with men. Not having grudges. Maybe you have not understood. Maybe you don't get it. Maybe you don't understand what you stand for as a child of God, as a servant of God, as a daughter of God. Maybe you don't understand. You are an agent of change. You are a peace distributor. You are there to, to unleash peace in the heart of men. So if we walk in bitterness, if we walk in anger, if we walk in rage, we are following the devil. That is not the path of Christ. The Bible says Jesus was walking about doing good unto all men. He was doing good unto all men. He, his hard desire was to do good to men. He, people were trying to stone him. People were trying to kill him. People were trying to finish him. But he was still doing good to men. He would have stopped on the way and said, Why have I come to help you? And you want to kill me? Let me go back to my father. But he continued. He continued. Until he fulfilled his purpose. Don't let what people do to you. Bring too much anger in your heart. Understand that as you follow Christ, these things will happen to you. As you walk in the statues, these things will come to you. As you have given yourself to the Lord, these things, you will see them. Unforgiveness will make you have an evil intention on others. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, you always have evil intention on other people. When you read the Bible in the book of First John chapter 3, reading verse 16, the Bible says, Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. He who hates his brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So when I begin to hate, when I develop hatred against my friend, against my brother, against my sister, against my loved one, the Bible says you become a murderer. And the Bible says, do you know that murderers have no eternal life? So you can't sing good. Hating brother, hating sister, you are singing good, you are praising God good. My brothers and sisters, you still hate people. You have put people in the prison of your heart. You don't want to release them. You don't want to let them go. And the Bible says you become a murderer and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. It doesn't matter how good you do it. It doesn't matter how perfect your pastor may praise you every Sunday. He might say, God bless you, my brother. God bless you for the good work that you are doing. He might say all the prophetic work upon your life. But I'm telling you, if you know that you have that thing hidden in your heart, it is time to let people go. So that you can see a new dawn. You can see the glory of God. No murderer has eternal life. Abide in him. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. She is the word of God. And no murderer has eternal life. Abide 
in him. Eternal life does not abide in madness. Come out, my friend. Come out from that situation. Unforgiveness makes the believer lose favor with God. And you will not lose favor with God this morning. Come out from unforgiveness. Otherwise, you lose favor with God. Otherwise, you lose that golden connection. Only the righteous cry out to the Lord, and the Lord heareth them. Not those who do not forgive. And that's why David said, If I hid iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not have heard me. So, unforgiving individual will lose favor with God. And I pray that you will not lose favor with God. There is a future. Listen to me. There is a future in forgiveness. So let us love. Let us flow. From, let love flow from our heart. Everyone. And you will see God stepping into the affairs of your life. Let love, a true love, flow in your heart. A true love for everyone. A true love for individual. A true love for everyone around you. Let love flow in your heart. And you will see the glory of God in your life. Let the love of God flow in your heart. Let the love of Christ flow in your heart. Now you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My brother, my friend. This very day, I want you to know, I want you to understand that this world is passing away. Things are not going to go the way that we want them. But someone, you can do it. If somebody did it, somebody forgave, somebody laid down their lives for the sake of other people, you can also do it. Oh, pastor, I can do it. You can do it. The other day, Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do it. You can forgive. You can let go anything that anybody has done to you. What has somebody done to you? That is so painful. That is so serious to the point that you can forgive. Christ forgave on the cross. He forgave. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 45, Genesis 45, reading verses 1 to 15. I want us to hear the word of God quickly. It talks about a man called Joseph. Joseph forgave his brothers. Let us hear briefly the word of God. Genesis 45, verse number 1 to 15. Yes, sir. Then Joseph could no longer control himself. He could no longer control himself. Before all his attendants. Mm. And he cried out. He cried out. Have everyone leave my presence. Mm. So there was no one with Joseph. No one with him. When he made himself known to his brothers. Mm. And he wept so loudly. He wept. So loudly. Mm. That the Egyptians heard him. Mm. And Pharaoh's household heard about it. Mm. Joseph said to his brothers, He said, I am Joseph. I am Joseph. Is my father still living? Is my father still alive? But his brothers were not able to answer him. They couldn't answer. Because they were terrified at mm. his presence. Mm. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. Come close. When they had done so, he said, mm. I am your brother, Joseph. I am your brother, Joseph. The one you sold into Egypt. You sold me one, once upon a time. You sold me. You got rid of me. But now I am here. Continue. And now, do not be distressed mm. and do not be angry with yourselves. Do not be distressed. Do not be angry. For selling me here. Selling me here. Because it was to save lives that oh, God sent me. Oh, praise the Lord. It was to save life that God sent me ahead of you. De de he developed a great deal of understanding. Continue. Finish it. For two years now, two years now, there has been farming in the land, mm -hmm. and for the next five years, yes, there will be no plowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. But God sent me ahead of you, sent me to preserve for you a remnant mm. on earth mm. and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Mm. So then, mm. it was not you, not you, who sent me here, who sent me, but God. God, oh praise the Lord! It was not you, but God. Whatever happens in your life, understand that it has happened for a purpose. 
When you understand that, you will not be bitter against people. When you understand that, you will be like Joseph. You will talk like Joseph. You will declare words like Joseph. Then it is for the purpose of God. It is for the purpose of God. God sent me. God sent me. He developed that mental attitude that it is not his brothers. But God sent him. God's purpose. God's plan. What is your reaction? When somebody does something against you, what reaction do you get? What reaction do you get? Did you finish it? Verse 8. 8. So then, it was not you who sent me here. It was not you. But God. God. He made me father to Pharaoh. He made me father to Pharaoh. Lord of his entire household. Uh -huh. And ruler of all Egypt. Mm. Verse 9. Now, hurry. Mm. Mm. Hurry back to my father and say to him, Yes. This is what your son Joseph says. Yes. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. He has made me Lord now. Now I'm no longer an ordinary person. Now I am Lord over all Egypt. Glory to God. No, it doesn't matter what. You, you know, you experience. Somebody will do it to you. But brother, it is for a purpose. Joseph came to the understanding that he had been sold. He had been sold to slavery. But it was for a purpose. Whatever comes to you, my friend, is for a purpose. Amen. If you pray and know what God wants to do in your life, you will not be too much offended at your brother or your sister. But it is for what? A purpose. It is for a reason. God did it for a purpose. Finish it for me. This is what your son Joseph says. This is what God Joseph. has made me Lord of all Egypt. He has made me Lord. Come down to me. Come down to me. Don't delay. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen. Oh, glory. And be near to me. Mm. You, your children, and your grandchildren. Your grandchildren. Your flocks and heads. Look at that. And all you have. Mm. Verse 11. I will provide for you then. I will provide for you. Because five years of famine are still to come. Mm -hmm. Otherwise... You and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. Mm. You can see for yourselves. And so can my brother Benjamin. Mm. That is that it is really I who am speaking to you. Mm. Tell my father about all the honor mm. accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen. Yes. And bring my father down here quickly. Bring my father. Verse 14. Mm. Then he threw his arms around his brother just Benjamin. Benjamin. And wept. Mm. And Benjamin embraced him, mm. weeping. Mm. Verse 15. And he kissed all his brothers. He kissed them. Look at that. Wept over them. Oh, glory. Wept over them. As, as a was. sign of a true forgiveness. He wept over them. Continue. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. Oh, glory. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. He wept over them. A true and a genuine forgiveness. If it were you, listen to me. If it were you, you would just stand on a point. And argue your case until the kingdom come. You argue your case. You all, you put all the the the, the 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 important important and the very good sweet words attached to what he has done to you. My brother Joseph had a heart for God. And as you said, God, do you have a heart for God? He he hugged his brothers, he kissed them, and the Bible says he, he wept over them as a sign of a true forgiveness, genuine from his heart, because God sent him, God sent him ahead of them to prepare for this great famine. God sent him. Whatever counts, your ways, my friend, has a purpose. Don't just look at it, it has a purpose. Joseph. Forgive his brothers. He forgave his brothers. Even though they did a great harm to him. As a brother. As a friend. He, they did so many things to him. That he would have been bitter all his life. But the Bible says he forgave them. He wept. He threw his coat. His uh, valuable garment around his brother Benjamin. What? 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 What, what a repentance. What a genuine touch from God. God through Joseph forgave. Even his brothers. Don't stand there and say, I can't forgive. They sold him. A brother. They sold him. If you are my brother and you have sold me, what do I have with you again? But this man saw that it was an act of God. God was behind it. God was doing it. Somebody has heard you. But don't look at the physical aspect. Look at what God wants to do out of that. That is why you can't forgive. He was looking at a different perspective of what has happened to him. 
David had to go through so many things in the hands of King Saul. David go, went through a great ordeal in the kings of uh, in the hands of King Saul. The Bible says in the book of First Samuel chapter twenty four. First Samuel chapter twenty four, reading verses three to eleven. David had to go through a great ordeal in the hands of King Saul. He was an enemy. He was a worse enemy. Saul wanted to finish David's life once and for all. He wanted to have no mercy for David. But let us hear the word of God. Let us hear the word of God. First Samuel chapter 24, mm. verse number 3. Yes, sir. He came to the sheep pens mm. along the way. A cave was there. Yes, sir. And Saul went in to relieve himself. Mm -hmm. David and his men were far back in the cave. They were far back. The man said, mm. this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said mm. to you, mm. I will give your enemy into your hands. Yes. For you to deal with for you to deal with as you wish. Yes. Then David crept out unnoticed mm. and cut off a corner of Saul's rope. He cut a corner of Saul's rope. Afterward, Afterward. David was conscious stricken mm. and, and for having cut off a corner of his rope. Mm. He said to his men, the Lord forbid mm. that I should do such a thing mm. to my master. Yes. The Lord's anointed. Or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. Oh, oh. Verse 7. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men mm. and did not allow them to attack Saul. Did not allow them to attack Saul. The worst enemy who wanted to kill him all. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to finish him. At the point, as a matter of fact, he was pursuing him. And he said, let me go and find a place to, 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 to ease myself. And in the process, the Bible says David was able to go close to the point that he cut a piece of his rope. Today, God has given you to me. I will finish you. You are my enemy. I will finish you. But the Bible says David had the fear of God in his heart. I'm not going to touch the anointed one of God. I'm not going to do the prophet of God any harm. I won't do it. It is within my prerogative. It is within my power. It is within my strength. But I'm not going to touch the anointed one of God. I'm not going to do him any harm. He forgave Saul. He did not account his sins against him. You account people's sin against them every day. Every mistake that people do, you account it against them straight away. Brother, let us learn to forgive. Let us learn to let go. Let us learn to hold our soul like David. Don't kill. Don't destroy. Hold your soul. God has a purpose. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Somebody has done something against you. Vengeance is of the Lord. God will repay. God will punish. God will step into it. God will bring judgment. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Forgive. Your path is to forgive. Your path, your path is to not do the act of unrighteousness. Don't do it. God will step into it. You don't have to do it. Finish for me, please. Verse number 11. 11. See, my father. My father. Look at this piece of your rope mm. in my hand. Mm. I cut off the corner of your rope. I cut it off. David showed him. I cut it off today. But did not kill you. I didn't kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand. Nothing. Oh. That I'm guilty of wrongdoing. Oh. Or rebellion. Oh. I have not wronged you. Mm. But you are hunting me down. To oh. Hallelujah. You are hunting me down. I have not done anything. David came to the understanding. My brother, when you forgive people, know that God is fully behind you. Know that God. God is fully behind you. God is fully on your side. No matter how, no matter what your enemies will do, they cannot prevail if God is on your side. God gave me. God gave you to me. To destroy you. To kill you. To finish you up. But I spared your life. So, look at the piece of your rope. Today, you were delivered into my hands. You were delivered to destroy you. Because you are pursuing me without a cause. I've done nothing against you. But yet, you want to kill me. What would you do if you get this opportunity? If somebody is staring at you at church. And you get opportunity to destroy them. If somebody... Step on your feet, step on your toes at church, and you get opportunity. 
If somebody does something to you, even in, at home, what do you do to them? If somebody, your wife, your husband, what do you do to them? Ladies and gentlemen, we must learn to forgive. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. What am I saying? Esau forgave his brother Jacob. Esau forgave his brother Jacob. Jesus forgave his generation or his enemies. Jesus forgave his generation or his enemies. When you read Luke chapter, Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 23, reading verses 4, then say Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He, play, he prayed for forgiveness. He prayed the Lord, forgive them. They have done me a mighty deal of harm, but forgive them. They don't know it. If they have the consciousness, they wouldn't do it. They don't have the consciousness. Therefore, Father, forgive them. Jesus prayed for his enemies. Would you be in that position? Today, you're praying for your enemies. Stephen, the Bible said they stoned him. He lifted up his head to heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand side of the Lord. The Bible says he forgave the people. He did not see his persecutors. He forgave them. Forgiveness must spring out of our heart. What are you holding today? My friend, against somebody that you can't let go. Think about it. What are you holding against somebody? If David forgave so, if Jesus forgave his generation, what they did, he welcomed men. Even today, he's in the business of welcoming men unto him. People are wallowing in sin, but he's still welcoming men. What a life. What a God. What a Savior who still does not look at the, 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 the sins of men, but welcome them if they turn to him. My friend, if you serve such a great God, open your heart to him and do good to all men. Forgive men their trespasses. If you forgive men their trespasses, the scripture says that your heavenly father will also forgive you your trespasses. How can I forgive, pastor? You can practice forgiveness by having a mind that Satan is the cause of all offenses committed to you. No man, but Satan is behind. Satan has an agenda. He has a plan. He has a motive behind all that is going on in your life. Develop that consciousness. Develop that mindset. And know that it is not that brother, it is not that sister, but the devil is behind it. Practice forgiveness by understanding that Satan is behind it. That sister did it to you. The devil is behind it. The devil is up to something. Be realize the spiritual aspect of it. And my friend, you can forgive. You can forgive also by accepting the father. Offenses are part and parcel of human behavior. Offenses are part and parcel of human behavior. Jesus said on earth, you will suffer many tribulations. On earth, you will suffer many persecutions. But be of good cheer that I have overcome the world. Offenses will come. Offenses will come, Jesus said. No matter what you do, no matter how you walk, no matter how you conduct yourself, Jesus says, offenses will come. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Seven times Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, unto seven times, but until 70 times 7. So that means 
Your brother can do this to you all day. You have to forgive. Jesus said, he wanted us to know that the bottom line is that don't hold any resentment so that your prayer will go unanswered. Your prayer can go unanswered. If you hold people, their trespasses against them. Vengeance is of the Lord. He will repay. Don't hold anything against anybody. You can practice forgiveness also by knowing that. Talk is people's opinion. And Baptists are always bad. Talk is people's opinion. People can express their opinion about you, how you look like, how you are doing, how things are going. People can express their opinion about you. Matthew chapter 5, reading verses 10 to 12. The Bible says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of things against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted the prophet which were before you. Oh, praise the Lord. There were prophets which were before you. There were priests which were before you. There were men of God which have gone before you. They were persecuted. Man of God, do not be worried when you go through persecution. Because those who went ahead of you were persecuted. Went through a great ordeal. The Bible says, blessed are ye. When you are persecuted, Jesus said, for my name's sake, great is your reward. Don't be angry. Don't be offended. Don't put people in your heart. Don't say, I am never took to, I will never talk to him again. Blessed are you when you are persecuted. Count it all joy. When you fall into diverse kinds of temptation, diverse kinds of tribulation, diverse kinds of affliction, count it joy. Don't count it anger. The Bible says count it all joy. You can forgive by becoming obedient to the word of God and emulate from the men who forgave in the Bible. You can forgive by becoming obedient to the word of God and emulate Learn from people who forgave in the Bible. Talk about Moses. Talk about David. Talk about uh, uh, Job. Talk about uh, Stephen. Talk about Jesus. You can talk about David who forgave so. You can talk about these great men. They forgave. They went through a terrible ordeal in their life. But they made room in their life to forgive. All you need to do is to make room in your heart to forgive. Forgiveness is of the Lord. And that is what the Lord requires from you as a child to be able to forgive. You can forgive by praying for the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6. See, then he answered. And he spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, No by mind, no by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. You can forgive. By letting the word of God. You can forgive. By praying for the help of the Holy Spirit. God help me. Spirit of the Lord, I need you this hour. He's an ever abiding, ever present helper in time of trouble. The Holy Spirit will come and strengthen you. Empower you. Anoint you. Elevate your thought and your mind. From the negative thing aspect of what somebody has done for you. So that you can have a, a very different spirit approaching situations and circumstances in your life. God wants you to forgive. As I come to a close, first Samuel chapter 2, verses 9. The Bible says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall not be silent in darkness. For by strength, shall no man prevail. By strength, you can prevail. Depend on the Holy Ghost. Depend on the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God lead you every day of your life. He will give you the power. 
He will give you the strength. He will give you that inner ability to let go and let God. Let go and let God. Let bitterness go. Let anger go. Let strife go. And let God be full in your life. You can forgive. By living an exceeding righteous life. Living an exceeding righteous life. Because of our time, I will not read that scripture. Matthew chapter 5, 38 to 48. Leading an exceeding righteous life. When you walk in the righteousness of God, you have the power to forgive. Righteousness is a booster. Righteousness will guarantee, will, will make, grant you power, strength, inner strength to forgive. When righteousness is ruling in your life, you can stand on that platform to forgive other people whatever they have done against you. You can forgive. You can forgive by learning to forgive yourself the past mistakes that you have done. If you don't forgive yourself, you cannot be forgiven or you cannot forgive other people. If you don't forgive yourself, if you don't let the past things go from your life, if you hold some bitterness against your own life, you can't forgive other people. You can also forgive by having room, giving room to patience, tolerance, and long suffering. Give room to patience, tolerance, and long suffering. Give room to patience, tolerance, and long suffering. Today, I want to declare something about your life. Today, I pray. For the power to walk in true forgiveness. In the name of Jesus. Power to walk in true forgiveness. May you walk triumphantly. Over all forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ. May your days. Of unforgiveness. Be over today. May you rise up. And may you mount up in Christ. In the area of forgiveness. And may you become. The champion and the territory taker that the Lord has called you to be. Unforgiveness will ruin your life. Unforgiveness will destroy you. Wake up for true forgiveness. If Joseph was able to forgive his brothers, think about it and forgive anybody who has offended you. And the Bible says if we forgive men their trespasses, our Heavenly Father will also forgive us our trespasses. My friend, next week, same time, I will come on your way. I believe that you've been blessed by the word of the Lord. I want you to continue to stay tuned to uh, Bless Radio. And I want us to fellowship every Saturday together, listening to the word of God. And I believe that you will continue to be a blessing. Let us have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father and God, we are grateful to you. I pray the Father, whoever has heard the sound of my voice this day, walking in the spirit of strife, anger, bitterness, and jealousy, all these things, the Bible described them as witchcraft. Father, they are not.